Today on the Tech Bytes podcast, sponsored by Juniper, we talk with a customer of Juniper's Abstra intent based networking data center software. Our guest is Darko Petrovic. He is principal engineer at Advania Iceland. Advania is an IT solutions company offering managed and professional services and IT infrastructure and integration. Uh, Darko, welcome to the podcast. So, what drew your interest to Abstra's product? First off, like you said, Advania is uh, I'm working for Advania managed service provider. We are one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in uh, MSP in Iceland. Uh, our main goal going with Abstra was we wanted to automate our data center as much as possible and go away from the traditional layer twos that many data centers are having trouble in the past years. So we were looking at different solutions, vendors, um, uh, even thinking about doing ourselves mm -hmm. with uh, some kind of automation with Ansible, Okay, so you're looking for an automation solution. You maybe investigated a little bit of doing it yourself, but what was there something that about Appster that you thought, oh wait, this is going to go better for us? So um, the first impressions from Appster I had a couple of years ago when I was doing my investigation about uh, similar solutions that are out there, but it it went uh, to the to the side that Appster is way more than and offering way more than other solutions and vendors there just because the level of automation and the, the level that it's, it's doing the provisioning and the, the whole networking bits and pieces that are under the bonnet mm -hmm. it's so easy and it's effortless basically effortless so what you've found is that putting abstra into your managed services network into the underlay of that data center environment has really just reduced the friction about making changes, right? Not even that. The margin of human error is uh -huh. minimal. So right. the, how the AppShot does that is it, it has basically every and each scenario that you can have in your data center. Yeah. And based on your inputs, he's going to calculate, the AppShot will going to calculate, is that feasible or not? If it's feasible, it's going to apply it on your network he, it, it's like pre-applying the configuration. The app calculates is the, the links are okay, is the routing okay, and based on all that pre-calculated stuff, it expects some results when you commit that changes. So the human, when it's the engineer, when it's uh, provisioning VLANs, VXLANs, uh, or links, uh, servers, new servers, it's basically four clicks to provision that. So what you're saying is Amstra is actually sanity checking. If you're trying to make a configuration, I want this VLAN here to be connected to this VLAN, but it also needs to connect to this segment of the network. It's actually going to sanity check that everything that you want or you think you want to configure is actually possible. Correct. Even right. the IPs, the VLANs, it's going to cross-check the VXLANs, the VLANs, it's going to complain if you're using the same VLAN. Or the same IP addresses ranges or, or same overlapping. The, right, yeah. correct. That's that's really cool. What can I ask just for a second here? What because it's obviously you as a managed service provider, you've got a choice of switches and you're probably operating it at a reasonable sort of scale. What sort of switches, physical switches, did you go with? So one of the huge elements that we wanted from our fabric is that we don't want to do vendor lock. That's especially important for the larger data centers when they have multiple vendors inside their network and juggling between the, the features, you know? Mm -hmm. So we wanted something that's going to give us the freedom of choice in the future years, if we don't mm -hmm. like, or we are going to have a bad relationship at that moment with some other vendor. All right, we have an alternative. So it's giving us leverage, basically, in the negotiations for the underlay ha hardware. At this point, we went for the Dell mm -hmm. and, where, and the, with their enterprise Sonic uh, distribution. Sonic is based on the FRR. So like the majority of vendors are, I don't know, the VMware also uses it, Facebook. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the, the Sonic is... So Dell ON, much. Dell's open networking switches with the Sonic uh, distribution that they've got, which is supported, right? Dell supports that. And then yes. you're running Abstra well, on top of that. So you, correct. You've actually well, got not mm -hmm. Abstra on top. Abstra is right. just let's say a controller. You know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the the operating system is Sonic. 
the, mm. the, the Dell itself is shipping. So it, Dell has two flavors of, of operating systems. They have their stock operating system, OS 10 or 9. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is an enterprise grade for their operating system that's Sonic. Okay, so you've got Dell Sonic underneath and you've got some flexibility there because you could either replace the Dell hardware with another open switch running a Sonic. You could replace the Sonic with another OS. But more importantly, Abstra over the top here gives you the freedom to change the hardware underneath. I guess that the idea here is that Abstra is doing the provisioning of the switches for you. You're not um, using the command line or Excel spreadsheets or text files to configure them, right? Nothing, nothing. So mm. not, it's not just giving you freedom to change the, the hardware. It's you can keep the same topology, same IP, same everything. So everything is the same from your perspective, but the hardware you can swap. Of course, it's not that easy in uh, in uh, in the real world in sense you need uh, good planning and migration scenario and everything but at the bottom line yeah it it's everything that you have everything that's running right now you can change and keep the same topology same uh, layer 3 configurations when you finish migrating to another vendor okay so i think that's something key to talk about is that what you're getting with abstra is not just this uh, sanity check, this help with configuration, this automation lever, uh, layer, but you're also essentially ensuring that you've got, uh, you can run a multi-vendor network. That's correct. How are you? Yeah, multiple data centers can be connected seamlessly, it, really seamlessly. I mean, I'm telling this from my experience that I had before with other vendors. I was working before Advani, I was working for a global integrator. So I went through a lot of different products based on the, for the SDN solutions in the data centers. And Abstra is maybe the best choice if you want to go having something nice, easy, uh, and manage, manage, manageable. So it actually works. Because one of the it stories does. I hear a lot is with SDN controllers is that people spend an awful lot of time keeping the controller running or installed or maintained. And they actually don't have a lot of time left over to do other work because you're also running an NSX, you're running a VMware NSX deployment for the second part of the networking. Is there an integration between the two? What's that like with NSX and Abstra working together? So our current uh, uh, network is compromised of three different key components. One of them is NSXD. The other one mm -hmm. is the data center fabric that's running on Abstra, and then we have that traditional MPLS core for interconnection with other carriers and customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thing that's Abstra giving us uh, in, in, in the middle is connectivity between the data centers. We're not touching the MPLS core in that perspective. So we can stretch a VLAN or L3 even through multiple data centers. So any CAS gateways also there, and it doesn't even hit the core. So the core is there, just a transport network, no configuration there. Right. From the configuration perspective of the NSXT, so Abstra is doing a read only uh, queries to the NSXT manager where can you where you can see all the VMs, the VLANs, the 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 VDSs, the the the, 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 the port groups. And based on that you can map out your Abstra switches, VLANs, uh, the policies or whatever you want. So you, what you're actually saying there is that you're actually integrating the NSX and the Abstra together. It's not a it's not a a, a, a read write and everything's coming together and you know mystical magic happens. It's Abstra looks at the NSX configuration and knows what's happening in the overlay and can work to help you with that. Is that right? Correct. Well, it gives you information. It doesn't do the configuration, actual configuration of the NSXT. That's done no. separately, right? But well, it's done in NSX, the, the, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But the everything that you configured there on the net on the on the, the segments, on the T1s, the T0, T1, everything is visible in Yapstra. I mean the 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 VMs to which uh, uh network adapter is connected, then you can map out that you can even forbid traffic. Of course, that's also possible in the NSXT, but additional security is available for you on the abstract level. So you can right. So you can actually integrate the micro segmentation policy that you've got from NSX with what's in Abstra. It's not that Abstra is going to configure the NSX, but it's aware of what the NSX configuration looks like, and you can see it. 
yeah, and that means a lot to to a network guys. I mean, mm. to see what's what they're working with. Also, the telemetry of the abstract is fantastic. It's a uh, the telemetry is way better than anything that then you're gonna use on your NMS. Mm -hmm. It's a go-to platform for for your insights on your fabric. You can see there everything from the bandwidth to the errors to the dropouts to the notification to even mm. app, even the 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 the, the microbursts are seen there. So what you're actually saying is your whole underlay is run by Abstra. It's monitoring the cable performance by looking for drops and signal changes on the optical because it actually watches the optical state of the fiber optic connections to see if they're working. Same for copper, slightly different though, depending on the type of operating system and so forth. But if you want to know, uh, you know, is my spine running at capacity? Is there a hot, is there links in the ECMP, uh, you know, leaf spine architecture that are running too hot? You can find out. It's all just part of Abstract. You don't have to go and find another system to match that. That's correct. I don't know for copper, though, because yeah. we don't have anything on copper these days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, for the fiber, yeah. And the, there is like a really nice graphic on Abstract for your link, you know, for the, for the spine and leaf links. And it's as your throughput goes, as your bandwidth goes high, the, the, that visualization, visualization of the, that link goes thicker, you know? Mm -hmm. So... You have all the numbers there running, but yeah, when you see in the visual capacity, what's your limit? Oh, and that's that's really nice and really helpful. Really, yeah, because you know where you are. You like your mean time to innocence. Like it's not the network, and you can prove it because you can look at everything and go like, bam, it's fine. Interfaces are yeah. up. It even it even draws out your entire topology, how your current topology looks like. All the links are there between the spines, the leaves, and the servers, everything is there, like real lines, you know? I didn't You didn't have to draw it or <laughs> configure it or, yeah. or keep no, it up no, to date. No, no, no. I mean, the only thing that, that's needed is when you build out your fabric. So you're going to click and on a lot of stuff, uh, rename a lot of stuff. So that initial setup is a, is a little bit nasty as in never so that's like mm. mandatory never solution right. each and every solution but the nice thing is that it's going the abstract will going to build out your entire fabric just based on the LLDP so that's it you can plug in your your spine and leaf links to whatever port and don't even put an interface number in abstract it's going to do right. it by for you for you and then it's going to draw you out how your topology looks like. So Darko, I wanted to ask, you know, whenever you bring in any kind of automation solution, it can, there's a learning curve. It might disrupt the way people are used to working. Was there any friction with you and the team trying to get used to Appster in this new way of working? Well, it was on my part because when we started testing this on POC, it was version three. We were testing version three. A major Appster gave a lot of changes in version four. So version four is you'll get a separate, uh, uh, um, separate sections for co configuring connectivity for external templates, uh, route maps, et cetera, et cetera. So in that sense, I, me personally had some- hey, you were the bottom <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But for the rest of the guys, it was easy because they, they don't know anything for, for the for <laughs> They're, the they're coming in clean, right? yes. Uh -huh. They're yeah, coming yeah. in clean. They're, they're not thinking of all the configuration that's going on under the hood and trying to work out. So, you know. so the learning curve is not that steep. It does uh -huh. have, like I said, with every new solution that you came across, it does have any a little bit hard, hard time to get around it. But with this, it's not that hard. So I guess the takeaway is that um, you, I sort of the intent of my question was like, it sounds like you can get a fairly good time to value, a time to where you're actually using it as opposed to just learning it. Like I said, from my experience with other vendors, and if you ask me now, I would choose AppShop or any other vendor anytime. It's really proven that good for you compared. And you've got experience, like you said, you came from an integrator. So you've well, actually had experiences on other systems and you're pretty happy with this one. Well, the bottom line is you don't need an engineer that's, that knows Cisco, Juniper, I don't know, uh, Dell, uh, Huawei, whatever. You don't need mm. that kind of engineer right now in your data center. You need a not, guy. Not for everyday work. work. You only need you it when you're making correct. critical changes. Yeah. 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 So you, don't, you, you just need a guy that knows to click with a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, it's trivial comparison, but as in a nutshell, it's like that, basically. I mean, When you're running a managed service provider like Advania is, you don't want to have high quality, highly trained, high priced engineers doing everyday work. You want to have them doing deep work like firewall deployments and rollouts and reviews of structural fate, like root cause analysis and that type of stuff. And as a senior, when I was a senior engineer, I spent way too much time doing scut work, config, yeah, or just configuring VLANs because nobody else could be trusted to do it. And it wasn't Correct. fun, right? No, it wasn't. I mean, like I said, AppStore is doing a sanity check for you. So the human error is, well, minimal. It, it, it really is. So you don't have to, I mean, you have to worry about when you get some errors on the fabric itself. And then you're going to need uh, one engineer or senior engineer to tissue that. But apart from that, yeah, it's everyday provisioning and that's it. You just put a good foundations in, in, uh, in, the, in the first go when you build it, when you're building your fabric and just template it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that does bring us to the end of our conversation. Darko, thanks for joining us. And if uh, you've piqued people's interest in AppStore and they want to find out more, they can go to juniper.net slash packet pushers slash AppStore. That's juniper.net slash packet pushers dot AppStore. We'll also have that link in the show notes that accompany this podcast. Again, Darko, thanks for joining us. And thanks to Juniper for being a sponsor. If you like this episode, you can find it and many more fine free technical podcasts and our community blog. It's all at packetpushers.net. Follow us on Twitter. We're at packet pushers. Find us on LinkedIn rate us on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.